Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shri Ayer. Lot of incidents happening all over the world in pockets, but everything appears to be related. And to connect the dots with us is Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar. And General Ravi Shankar and I have been having this conversation for a while. General Ravi Shankar, welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar. And this is a joint uh, video that will be also available to subscribers of Gunner Shot also. Namaskar, sir. Welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram and thanks a lot for calling me once again. Long time since uh, we've been doing this joint thing. A lot of events have happened. Uh, the last they, time we understand. did this was in when we did that on Divya Astra when you were in India. Now you know yes, you yes. change shows. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, sir, you are you are sit down interview with us uh, where we talked about your interactions with uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam and uh, Manohar Parikar. That is one for the ages. Viewers, if you have not watched it, please sure. do watch it. It was in a more comfortable settings. We were sitting face, sir, face to face and we did face that interview. Face. Fantastic one. Thanks once again, sir. I know I put you through a lot of... Oh, welcome. Man, no, 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 no. It was, it was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So, let, let's get back to today's topic. Um, General Ravi Shankar, Moscow attack. This is like there was a lull and suddenly again things have picked up again. And then now Russia is retaliating. On the other hand, there is also things going on. Israel went and took out uh, some people in the Iranian embassy located in Syria. And now Iran is threatening uh, response. By uh, While these are happening, you also saw Pakistan, uh, you know, somebody from Pakistan go and, and take out uh, some things in Chabahar port. And BLA is hitting Pakistan in Gwadar port. Chinese have been killed. So, a lot of things here happening in the Middle East and, and uh, South Asian region. In On top of this, you have a lot of other things happening. For example, China is taking pot shots at Philippines. China is threatening action against uh, Taiwan and uh, United States. Now, I think Janet Yellen today is in China and, and one doesn't know what exactly the talks there are. So, a lot of things are going on here. Please connect the dots for us because you will bring us a fresh perspective from geopolitical point of view. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, look, uh, let me put two, three macro issues in, in place first. The first thing is that the West Asian situation was always going to go out of control. That was on the cards. So it slowly was expanding and this was predictable ever since October 7th last year. It was only a matter of time, right, uh, that it comes to this. And that place is going to go bonkers if Iran gets into the equation. It has already gotten, but if, if something more happens overt against Israel, that place is up for grabs. And you, in which case, uh, you might have to call me more for interactions on P Guru. Absolutely, sir. Our okay. pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what's happened in Moscow is something which you have actually alluded, it's the return of terror. There's a new wave of terror coming up. And uh, it is not uh, only in Moscow. You have to see what happened in Iran uh, when General Soleimani's you know, annual, death anniversary was there and there was a bomb which went off then. Over 100 people got killed. That was also an uh, ISK attack. It was about three months, four months back. Before the October 7, uh, uh, you know, Israel Gaza took off. Now, this event, then ISK has been active in Afghanistan and in Pakistan uh, and other places. You know, there are a lot of terrorist activities just going on in uh, the Sahel region of Africa. So, there's a return wave. In fact, this is something which me and General Hasnain. I'm going to discuss on 8th, not, uh, yeah, that's on, sorry, Monday. Sunday. Yeah. On Sunday, we're going to discuss the 7th, yeah, 7th evening, 8 o'clock. Those of you who want to come, fine, because we've been th uh, thinking that, rather strategizing, that the, the, the world is going to see a return of terror, in which case, uh, we're going to confront terror. We're going to confront the West Asian crisis. 
plus the fact that Israel and Ukraine are running around for ammunition. Both are short of ammunition. So the day they get the ammunition, you'll have spikes there. So that place is going to be chock-a-block full. If that is chock-a-block full, USA will be completely involved in both these theaters. If that happens, the question is, does it give a window of opportunity for China to do something? Now, we'll switch to China, right? China, every second day, there are boats hitting each other in Philippines. Uh, then every third day, there's a thing coming out, will Taiwan be attacked? And off late, the war of words between India and China has gone up. So you look at it, there's a situation which has been developing there. In fact, uh, I've been saying that that's a third front today, where which is under uh, conflict. It's only that in that front so far, bullets have not flown. But the emotions are pretty high. Uh, so the question is, which is on everyone's mind, is will Xi Jinping take China to war? Okay. Uh, you let a, we'll have to uh, assess this, not through the prism of what's happening in Moscow or Iran or Gaza or Houthis. That's, that's going to happen. But from purely a Chinese perspective, I mean, that's the uh, thing. Now, when you look at it from a Chinese perspective, you have to step back from the equation and see what you're going to see what Xi Jinping said in October 22, one and a half years back during the 20th Party Congress. And he's virtually repeated it in the last March, uh, in March, the two sessions. What were, what were the, the phrases? I'll t touch upon the phrases. He spoke of the China, China dream, rejuvenate the great Chinese nation, prepare for the worst case scenarios, withstand high seas, choppy waters, and dangerous storms. This is repeated in the two sessions also. But he's also said, increase China's international standing influence and enable it to play a greater role in global governance and over and above he's laid a high premium on uh, national security and he's priming PLA to be the greatest military power on earth all this has been going on for the past one and a half years then he's carried out a lot of naval exercises and missile firings around Taiwan so the focus was on Taiwan till the Taiwan elections Right, that didn't go through. Now, Philippines has caught, then war of words with India. So, there is a situation there which is happening. And if all this is happening, he can't go to war just like that, unless if this US is there. We have to remember, US has a, a treaty with Philippines. There, you know, US has four bases or five bases in Philippines. So if tomorrow U.S. and if China and uh, Philippines go to war, U.S. is bound to get involved in it. There's a Taiwan Relations Act, okay, which mandates that Taiwan goes to, uh, sorry, USA goes to help Taiwan. And Biden has also said that we will be there. So there's a problem. So if... Taiwan, if Xi Jinping wants to go to war against Taiwan or Philippines, he has to keep USA out. He's also got problems with Japan, Senkakus, right? Uh, he wants to capture them. So if he goes into Taiwan, I will we'll look at the relationships. It's virtually, he will be into uh, Japan also. So Japan gets drawn in. And then Korea, South Korea. And Japan have equations, so they'll also get it. So you ought to see the whole place is like a tinderbox at this point of time. Now, over and above that, uh, I'd like you to put the first map on, please. Uh, over and above that, he's issued a new standard map. Uh, if you look on the left you know, uh, corner, that's a new standard map. As per this new standard map, 
he's eaten up arunachal pradesh ladakh complete he's now put a 10 dash line right and that 10 dash line encompasses taiwan also and philippines and everything so uh, now we wants that he wants global governance he wants to be the you know uh, china dream this everything he can't get all this without a war i mean the china dream plus the new standard map and global governance means war so is this the opportunity because to achieve anything he has to keep usa out and usa is stuck there so does he sense a opportunity so that's the first question okay now there are a few other things in this story of uh, yeah we can take the map off we'll we'll come back to it a little later uh right oh, there are few other things in the story now the thing is uh, xi jinping also wants to go down in chinese history as the greatest chinese alive over and you know go beyond what mao did beyond what deng xiaoping did okay uh plus he wants a sinocentric global order and things like that and china dream so both these put together are a heady cocktail right and both these can't be you know a war contributes to both these greatly but then the decisions also contribute heavily because at the end of the day to achieve both these ambitions he has to go to war and war is risky you don't know how war will happen what you know how it will end it's full of unintended consequences we've seen it in russia and ukraine we've seen it we're seeing it in gaza and we're seeing the unintended consequences in iran and the unintended consequences in you know uh, return of global terrorism now when he goes to war if terrorism goes into xinjiang what happens what happens to xi jinping and his dream it will just burn okay what happens he goes in he doesn't have an exit policy anywhere i mean it's easy to go into war putin has done it he's without any exit policy he's stuck there netanyahu has gone to gaza he's not coming out okay so it's easy to go into war but difficult to come out america went into afghanistan it took 25 years they came out defeated so exit policy does xi jinping have in either and also look at it india for the past 4 years there's a face off against india what has he achieved except some barren rocks on the other hand he has induced strategic confidence into india now india is saying take a walk so that is victory that's not a sense of any victory so he goes into taiwan taiwan becomes a porcupine which he can't swallow then what happens right and if he goes into philippines and gets stuck there in all those islands because philippines means all oh, the complete stratly islands where four countries have uh, this thing so he gets stuck with other nations uh, right so there is there is you know he is he can uh, he can get stuck so we show the next map i'll explain uh, yes, you don't sir, mind just one second one moment yeah, yeah go ahead sir. look at this look at this map okay uh, taiwan china you can see vietnam you can see philippines you can see spratly islands you can see malaysia indonesia and, and where we are in the bottom left is the malacca strait i'm doing this to get orientation for everyone these lines which are coming are the shipping lines lanes right taiwan strait and north and south of taiwan is complete trade flowing it comes to spratly islands where there's a problem going on if there's war in spratly islands or war in taiwan these shipping lanes will get affected maximum effect will be where china okay how just see this taiwan to the right 100 kilometers is the nearest japanese island of yoniguni 
to the south 200 kilometers is philippines okay and then you look at taiwan a little farther away if you want to do blockade of taiwan or operate against taiwan just i'm taking a case of taiwan only he has to put in effect all ports from shanghai to hong kong guangzhou all these ports will have to be activated to mount an attack on taiwan and a blockade and all that nonsense now if a blockade happens i mean let's talk of only the blockade if a blockade happens around taiwan it is natural the us navy will come around that blockade philippines will react japan will react considering the closeness of us so there will be a whole lot of other navies it's one thing to say you know i will do missile drill so i lay off but when you go to war everyone will react now if everyone reacts what happens to this what happens to these lanes they all get interrupted who will lose economically who will get a squeeze china so all this he has to view okay yeah you see this malacca strait complete right from taiwan either side of taiwan blockade those lanes go philippines reacts anything towards philippines goes right and all the mounting bases from china will be under attack whatever attack they are that means the shipping will not stop so there will be a virtual seize of international shipping in this area and china will be the first one who will get affected this is something which people don't understand the first bullet goes into this area in this area it is china which is going to get affected one that's the first part second you if you yeah look at this all japan taiwan philippines will all get involved in the area and start fighting against china possible even malaysia might get in now will china and xi jinping be ready to go to war with so many countries simultaneously i don't know i don't know at all whether it's feasible right uh if all this is happening you think india will keep quiet there is something called a chain reaction warfare what is chain reaction warfare it is that you uh, you know fight with one and someone else takes advantage and this is something which china is worried about if china is worried about chain reaction warfare and they start war with one more and two three other nations come in then china is all alone he's got no friends he's got no allies then everything is up in the grabs so that is a worry which xi jinping and his uh, cohorts have then you have to see yeah we can take this off now i don't think we need it anymore then you have to see the issue of uh, the pla is the pla ready for war first is the pla ready for a multi front war that's the second question okay i mean just think pla doesn't have any combat experience and these are complicated operations amphibious operation against taiwan is very complicated after the second world war this will be the first war of this amphibious operation of this kind at that scale right and the maritime operations around the spratlys are something which no one has done so both will take off together okay high altitude war against india after 62 no experience and this single child conscript guys of pla are not fit i mean frankly they are not fit okay and it's they're not fit for one more reason there's a demographic decline happening in china it is this pla young chaps who have to look after their parents when there's no social security there no other problems why will a parent allow his son to go and die will they die will the son die will he do the supreme sacrifice and that is why these fellows this chinese have not published how many people have died in galwan so that the public doesn't know so all these factors are involved so these chaps can't fight i mean that's one way of looking at it then we have discussed pla new things their leadership is getting sacked their equipment is poor 
the rocket forces are have lot of issues okay their uh, new conscripts are new their equipment is constantly new so many being inducted so there's a lot of turbulence in pla and the next thing is does xi jinping trust his leaders his generals do the generals trust xi jinping it's up for grabs we don't know now if the top level management of a, any company gets shacked what will be the effect down the line in the morale of any company that is there in pla also okay i don't think the pla morale is high i mean this is my view and they prep- and you look at the pla performance in red sea or anti piracy operations indian Army, indian navy has been active us navy has been active uk navy act- has been active but pla navy which went there to gain experience is sitting in djibouti doing nothing they are not doing any anti piracy operations the excuse is oh none of the chinese ships have been attacked but damn it you went there to gain experience and the operational deployment so their operational deployment is within djibouti so if that is the case how will they do maritime operations against taiwan or all this and how do you keep usa out of the equation there no logical way of keeping usa out of the equation the one great thing today in the geopolitical thing not withstanding what's happening in moscow or iran or gaza and all usa is not committed militarily not a single boot is on ground everything is de- ready they have not fired they are just firing a few missiles against southeast the pacom will come into play australia whatever is there will come into play indian navy and indian armed forces will come into play so will xi jinping take all this on so that's a million dollar question so then what do you say Uh, of course the demographics is poor and think like that and uh, uh, all that is there then it comes to the question okay can there be a war by design the chances are very low at this point of time xi jinping taking advantage of this entire situation going by design is pretty low and you also have to consider their economy is poor economy is going through bumps he is now going all over to do exports with evs and solars and all that okay now he goes for war everyone will go against him you see one something which people don't understand sanctions against russia won't work or didn't work for two three reasons russia has got technology of its own russia is a exporter of grain net exporter of grain russia is a net exporter of energy it is a net exporter of everything so sanctions won't work against it what about china china is oil deficient it is grain deficient it is technology deficient and economy is wobbling we all know it economy is on the skid row so with all this you think xi jinping will go to war by design i doubt questionable pla questionable economics questionable leadership a lot of countries are waiting to sort out china he doesn't have allies you see when you go to war you need diplomacy who will stand up for him in un north korea pakistan name a third country which will stand up for china it's not there so going by design is doubtful by accident it's feasible if tomorrow he is active in uh, you know philippines a philippines naval boat goes down for some reason and there's firing there something and that's war okay some trigger happy chinese pilot fires as near taiwan and triggers a war accident some guy you know they do, do a dangerous maneuver against us for airplanes and that goes you are up for the grabs he drives something in himalayas that can happen any day i, I mean on that we should not have a you know second view about it so how do you prevent that that's the question 
how do you prevent that is a question on which is uh, the million dollar question in front of all of us right you have to prevent it by better ties between all the affected parties from south korea to japan to taiwan to philippines to malaysia to india and vietnam and usa now all these people have to put together okay and you have to see okay even if there's an accident why will xi jinping go to war that's the question he will have to take into fact the national sentiment within uh, you know china he have to see the his own sense of culture history sovereignty and how the world will respond whether he can win remember one thing xi jinping will not go to any war if he can't win winning is the first prerequisite of going to war for him he made the mistake of getting into a conflict with india with a thing that within 10 days i'll come out and 15 days or 20 days whatever i'll achieve my objectives till date we don't know what the objectives are he is not able to come out from there or he goes into taiwan or philippines and gets stuck there also what happens to xi jinping what happens to his global dream so all these questions are up for the grabs so how do you prevent it you yesterday also i was talking in my in gunner shot you prevented by you know side stepping all these actions he's got some red lines xi jinping has got red lines so play those red lines push the red lines only till it they don't break he does salami slicing thing isn't it he does salami slicing and aggressive behavior wolf warrior behavior repeat it back you seen our uh, foreign minister he said he went to singapore and said what china is doing is ridiculous he went to manila and said i will support your sovereignty claims and the barb has gone home in china to so push them push those red lines back i would also suggest that they undertake a, a you know i want to undertake adopt the philippine strategy of assertive shaming assertive transparency what is assertive transparency this is in which you name china see even in our uh, conflict with china or eastern ladakh india never named china taiwan doesn't name china okay japan is also hesitant but philippines has done it assertively it's called assertive transparency where they name and shame china so it's high time we started doing it usa does it okay so all these things are there we we need to side step but not and put china on the back foot about 3 weeks back china was on the back foot against the uh, philippines they were having a tough time it wasn't easy so well this is the way forward so finally if i wrap it up will xi jinping go to war not by design at least not now till such time he feels the whole tide is in his favor he can win till he has a clear assurance that he is going to win he will not go will he go by accident good good chance it could happen can a accident happen very high chance given everything which is going around so i have painted a picture for you and you know i've connected it up with what's over what was happening in moscow or the middle east and russia uh, ukraine war your questions and then maybe we'll go to the audience yes sir um, one of the things that i wanted to make one observation and you said that you know india without breaking the red lines can at least get close there and then you know push the thing a little bit how do you see the fact that now china's two options to bypass malacca strait one was chabahar the other one was gwadar both of them are now in serious jeopardy because whatever they try to do there they are losing a lot of lives one can say that one one place balochitla army the other one is something else uh, the net result let's take a look at it both these places have become hostile for china so basically he still stuck with the malacca strategy yeah malacca could 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 one say then that india could be also making sure that 
China has no choice but to always use Malacca? Look, let me put it this way. Malacca and uh, I mean, Gwadar and Chabahar were never options. They were options in the distant future. I mean, they were, as of today, they are no option. You can't take anything from uh, uh, you know Gwadar and go across Karaparam Pass. That that is a fool's uh, game. Okay, Chabahar to out of question. You know, look, you have to understand the Afghan dilemma. What Taliban is doing? Actually, Taliban is held everyone at ransom. Taliban's whole story is ransom. Okay, he is putting a gun to everyone's head. He says, "Look, I will export terror to you if you don't help me." Now, if you want to put convoys through Chabahar, and they have to then go through Afghanistan, there's no third route. Okay, then it is gravy for Taliban. Every day they'll be so nothing will go through. Taliban, uh, uh, you know, Afghanistan, Chabahar is out of question. Gwadar was a dream. We always knew that it will not function. In fact, three days, four days back, I I made a statement. The CPEC is the third front of Pakistan. Pakistan has the eastern front and the western front, and the third front is CPEC. And if you see in the past one year, maximum attacks have taken place along CPEC, and none of the road uh, or rail lines have come up. Even if they come up, they can't go across Karakoram. Karakoram is seventeen thousand plus. It is stuck. It is closed for good six months and a year. This year, in the beginning of the year, one section of the road went down. Okay, and you, I mean, it, this is a pipe dream that they will get an entry into Gwadar. Gwadar could become a naval base for China. That's a different story, but that also now looks distant. So he's got no choice but to get stuck. Get stuck with Malacca. He cannot get out of Malacca. Why he is upping the ante against India on the LAC, putting pressure on uh, you know in Sikkim, the Chumbi, uh, Chumbi Valley, or in Eastern Ladakh, or he is claiming Arunachal, put pressure on the LAC so that India's focus is on the LAC, and then he can get through the Malacca Strait. But today India has changed track altogether. Two years, three years back, the discussion in the strategic circles was: Is it continental or maritime? Today, it is not so. Today, the discussion is: It is continental plus maritime. India has changed its stance. You have to understand that. Now, I can't explain all that within this time. What I would suggest to all viewers, whether they are in Ganeshot or in P Gurus. Go see three uh, of my videos, which I've done with uh, General Hasnain. The first video is about Bhutan. Okay. The second video is about the five things, five things which are rattling China. And the third video is about the Indian pushback against China. We have detailed with maps. I have explained as to how we are pushing back against China, and how Indian Navy has spread all over Indian Ocean. I mean, you have to believe, see these to believe what is happening in India. Many people think, "Oh, China will attack." China can't attack. The, those days are gone. So, Xi Jinping wants to go to war. We'll see where he goes to war. And, like I said, it can be accidental, but not by design. Yeah, this is my view. I hope I've given the macro view to everyone. And, uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, no, I, I think you have. Yeah. Yeah, and so I would suggest that you see, see see these three, see these three videos, all of you. I mean, it's not because you. I'm asking you people to come and see, because a lot of people have seen, and I'm getting a lot of responses. In fact, day before yesterday, I did a video on the Tibetan perspective, my perspective of Tibetan. I've given a, my perspective of what. How we handle the Tibetan problem? How we handle the LAC? Uh, everything. See that uh, the number of uh, tweets I've got on it, the number of comments I've got on it, on these four videos, are probably the highest so far I've done on Gunner Shot in a series. And uh, hopefully this also should go viral because I'm giving you a different perspective altogether.
right? Um, so all this is a series, and one has to tune into the fact things are changing. China is changing, yeah. India is changing, the world around us is changing, and we have to be nimble-footed to change. If you you're not nimble-footed to change, yeah. General Ravi Shankar, you know, when you look back at the 12 years of rain thus far of Xi Jinping, right? Uh, CPEC, I think, took off only under him, if I remember correctly. It wasn't before them. Uh, the policy was hide your claws and bide your time. That was Deng Xiaoping's uh, strategy. So, CPEC alone, I'm hearing that it runs into tens of billions so far invested. And one time, one section of the road fell. And the entire group that was working there, the submerged and a new lake got formed. It was not a, yeah. it was not an ordinary fall. And and you would think that that would make them take pause. Yet they persisted. They have come all the way up to Gilgit, but they are not able to go through the plane because the strategy is. This is what I've read in an article, position paper on this. They want 25 kilometers buffer zone on either side of the CPEC highway. And this CPEC highway is going through the heart of Pakistan once it comes through the plains. Which Pakistani will give up his uh, land to mm -hmm. give uh, China no, 25 yeah, kilometer buffer? No, but there is no plan for them to make that road. They don't have this plan. I mean, forget that must have been an initial thing. But as of now, even that ML1, the alternate track between uh, Karachi and uh, Lahore or Islamabad, that also is not being funded. Uh, the alternate uh, expressway is also not coming through. Uh, I mean, it's not all that is out of the question. Let me be very clear. All that is there. Yesterday, I read a report where there is a $50 billion, de I won't say default, uh, gap in funding of BRI. Okay. And no, and after this attack, which has happened in near the Dasu Dam, that CP is, C is virtually come to a halt. All Chinese projects have stopped working. The last time when that Dasu Dam attack happened year before last, when seven, I think seven engineers were killed and then one driver was killed, eight people got killed in that. At that time, the work stopped for nearly uh, eight, nine months. Pakistan had to pay five million or six million dollars as compensation for all those people who were killed, and then work started. And this was after Pakistan put in two light divisions to hold the CPC, and this has happened. Now they got they're stuck. So when will this recover? When this will come through? We don't know. These are all open-ended things. CPC is a, at the way I look at it, is a dead horse, and the CPC is not about the road. It's about power plants. It's about uh, you know, Gwadar Port, it is about so many other things, hydroelectric projects, it's about the Dam Arbasha Dam. So, so many issues are there in this. And uh, the connectivity between them is the road, but that also is not going to come through because everything is stuck now. So, uh, that is a pipe dream. So, and you know, and with the with the kind of politics which is going on in Pakistan, and you think USA will let it go through? USA has now twisted Pakistan's tail full and tight. Okay. So, you see, you have to understand where Pakistan is. Pakistan, for security and for arms, it has to go to China because the West is not giving anything. For funding, China is not giving anything, so it has to go to the West, IMF. So, what will Pakistan do? And the Pakistani generals are very greedy guys and they're very chalu guys. They will not give away anything to China and they'll keep lining their pockets. Right? Between giving anything to the state and to their pockets, the first is their pockets and the rest anything else. And they're too smart by the half to give any concession to China which uh, gives China an unfair advantage. Okay, so, and they want to be on the, look, you have to also understand, Pakistani generals have villas in, you know, Dubai. They have islands in off Australian coast. They have flats, Tony flats in Mayfair. Okay, and they go to France for holidays. If they get 10 days holidays, they go to France. 
so all their money is in the west it's not with no no one goes to china for a holiday so where will their children are all studying in you know usa and all that so where will uh, will you think they'll betray the west they can't they can't even betray so they are playing a middle game they are playing a beautiful game for themselves the country can go to dogs so that is where that story is uh viewers on a side note i don't know how many of you have read my money series if it was not for pakistan i would not have any topics to write about the next <laughs> the next two books they are going to be released in the next 6 months one in, in a month or two in the next one after that four months from now they're done by the way i'm done with them this is just yes, editing good. and getting printing and and getting the word out both of them are centered around pakistan and china these guys are such a treasure trove of information that you can these are books of fiction but there's a lot of stuff that actually happened so i would you know uh, request all of you to give me the same kind of support that you have given thus far to all my book i don't know how many of you read my book uh, paper and money out because in my opinion that is a much better book in terms of trying to explain to the viewers what happened since 1980 late 80s to present day that 35 40 year period Uh, it's not just the 10 years of upa uh, sir i know you don't care much about politics i'm talking about india yeah, as a yeah, country yeah. what it went through what it went through and and uh, who started this npa business where did the whole begin how did uh, the thing happen yeah. that fundamental stuff is all explained in this anyway so uh, no, no, let me clarify no no yeah. let me clarify i'm very tuned to politics i know all the politics because i met and handled dealt with all the politicians to think that i don't know politics i think no i know no, you all stay the away from politics keep, let me put it i keep away from politics because i have a bigger aim yes i mean let me give you let me tell you let, let me tell you uh, you know today I, i mean i must narrate this to you people yes yes off late there are a lot of attacks against india indian democracy from germany usa if foreign affairs has come out with the article all that no they they you know they point fingers at our democracy x y z i felt bad honestly i mean whatever our politics are whether it's bjp congress pmc dmk is our internal affair it's a democracy in a democracy there will be one person for and other person against it is natural let them fight let us fight our bunks ourselves and may the best man win the voter janta janardan after all our this is such a beautiful country after 5 years every politician has to go in front of every indian and say yaar mere ko vote to de do beak mangta hai ye hamara strength hai okay that's our headache whom we choose it's not bloody usa or germany or china or malaysia to say you know this is not the kind of democracy it should exist in india it's india's right so this is my view okay now uh, i felt bad today ambassador trigunath anil trigunath who who's been our ambassador in the west asian region and in moscow he wrote an article so we just had a chat so 10th we are going to do this and the subject is very clear i mean we are going to be hammer and tongs at it a politically interference in Indo- india's internal matters and we're going to discuss it thread bare and put it across to everyone i mean you can internal i mean like you can you can support any party you want i have no problem with it i can support any party i want you should have no problem with it i mean you might have a problem politically but internally but externally i don't think any tom dick and harry can have a say about what happens in my country look for so many years we had congress then we had some kichri government today you have bjp government tomorrow it will be something else but that's democracy we had one of the best democracies we had bloodless transfer of power 75 years this has not happened in usa also 
Uh, you look at it, it's not happened in USA also. Blood loss transfer of pass, right? Uh, and then you, one doesn't have to go very far. Four years back, it happened. Insurrection was the word which were used. I see, I saw, I still remember head, headlines. Has that ever happened in India? Aren't we proud of ourselves? Whatever politics you follow. I mean, that's the way I look at it. That's my politics. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we have a few questions for you, sir. Uh, let me yeah, yeah, please. Get the go question ahead. started. Sir, while you are answering the yeah. question, I might temporarily disappear because I need to go look at all the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. ahead, go ahead. So go just ahead. feel free, sir. I'm not off. I'm just listening. I'm just... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no problems. Lining yeah. up the questions. Here we go, sir. First yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Why don't I see the private chat today or the comments? Oh, I don't know. I think if I'm hosting, you may not be able to see. No, oh, private chat, you should no, be able no, to see. No, no, normally it comes. I'm not, it's not coming. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Fine. I just typed no, hello. I, I, I'm okay. Oh, a hello has come, but uh, nothing. Other uh, comments have not come. Normally, I oh, get to public see the chat has not okay. come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, that's okay. Uh, Bhavya Ramakrishna, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. A man, and member, yeah. Magnet Ranga wants to know, Namaskar, yeah. we have no control over what China does. We can rest assured that the Indian defense forces are more than capable. But can China face the consequences? See, Magnet, it's a, the point is, what are the consequences you're looking at? If you're looking at the consequences of defeating Chinese army, you'll not get it. Consequences have to be political in nature because China is someone who understands only political victory or political defeat. Everyone said, you know, China will run over India when they came in 2020. Everyone till date, many people say, oh, we have not been able to regain our land and, you know, we've lost so much territory and all that. And the Chinese are there blocking. That friction point is there. They're blocking us uh, entry into accepted patrol points. We can't access many areas, two areas, Demchok and uh, Depsan. We know that. But what's happened to China? Today, people in China are questioning, what are you doing there? What have you achieved by going and sitting there? You have made India strategic confidence. You have ensured that the next generation of Indians hate you. You have to understand this concept with China. You see, one of the biggest problems I've had during my service also was to convince people China is not your friend. Everyone said, why? Everything here is Chinese. Even Ganesha has come from China. You or people go and meet uh, everyone. Or Prime Minister goes and sits on a jula and does jula on, with Xi Jinping. He goes to uh, Mahabalipuram and eats dosas. He goes to Wuhan and they are friends. China is investing in India. Everyone had forgotten 62. I mean, I don't blame them. I don't blame anyone in this. But the psyche of India had changed. Now, in such a country, you try to force the issue militarily in eastern Ladakh. And that face-off goes on, active face-off goes on for four months. And now it has gone four years passively. Complete history of Indo-India-China conflict, right from 59, from the time China entered Tibet till now, has been refreshed. People who didn't know about it also know about it. People who didn't know about it are reading about it. The entire generation, this next generation of youth are against China. I can watch for it because I deal with students every second day. Everyone dislikes China across the board. So what has China achieved? It has lost the way I look at it. So that's the consequence. First consequence. Second consequence. Yeah. Okay. Z on the most wanted list for nameplate theft. Yeah, possible. <laughs> Thought provocator. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's fully possible. I, I mean, I have no issue with it. 
he can put it on any name plate he wants any this thing he wants and nothing will happen after all, like our uh, external affairs minister said just by putting a name plate wherever you want that land doesn't become yours so there's no problem yeah um, sir i i think i uh, cut you off you're going to make another point on uh, magnet ranga's question second point and i thought you were done the pause was a little long so i thought you were done i'll please uh, no no no, please. no that's okay that's not a problem we, we, that's not, not an issue uh, you see the the second point which i was trying to make is again i can't highlight everything here i would request you to see that uh, uh, video of mine where indian pushed back against china see those three videos which i said i mean what magnet ranga asked was a very deep question which every indian must see and understand that's the point I, that's why i'm going again back to those three videos you will be surprised as to what we have done to china in just the past three months whether it's on technology whether it's military whether it's geopolitical whether it's xyz maritime today indian navy is fighting piracy it is at agaliga we got a base out there you have a new base in uh, jatayu you have your andaman nicobar is being strengthened okay you done a twin carrier operation which only chi- on the only twin other nation which have done a twin carrier operation is usa even china has not done it and i mean i didn't know about this it is the chinese news agency which came out and said india is the only nation which has come out uh, with this capability and they are doing tom tom about it i will do tom tom because even that fellow can't do so that's why i say please see all of you it's worth seeing these three videos and a lot of people are seeing it i want your views on it you might be critical about that i have no problem but see yeah thank you sir uh, next question is from uh... why bansal general sir how will it unfold for india and china if china attacks india yeah why are you thinking only that china will attack india let me ask you this question i'll post this question back to you bansal ji why do you think china will attack india i explain to you why he can't attack india you have to understand let me give you a flip when did india attack pakistan you did just that one balakot strike isn't it that's all and then the nuclear equation came into play and everything went pus you think china can do anything more everyone tells me oh china's economy is 18 trillion and ours is only 4 trillion so what if do economies fight militaries fight what is pakistan's economy i don't know it must be 3 400 200 billion dollars i don't i don't even know about it but definitely our economy is 10 times theirs has it stopped pakistan from troubling us so what stops us from troubling china i mean these are things which you have to start realizing I don't know if someone has explained all this in the way I'm doing it today to all of you whoever is watching wherever you are and these are the issues which I have tackled in Gunner Shot over 5 6 videos see I did, did a tremendous video with General Shokin Chauhan and General Rakesh Sharma Rakesh Sharma commanded 14 core which is eastern ladakh he was the boss of that area he knows every rock out there see his views okay so so bansal i don't know where you are whether you are in india or abroad just relax china will not attack india if it attacks india it's asking for more than it can do yeah you know there is a there's a famous saying in america it's not the size of the dog in the fight it is the size of the it's fight, the fight in the, the dog. dog yeah 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 the indian dog has lot of fight let me be very honest and i'm very proud of it don't worry 
<laughs> um, Brian Anderson wants to know, sir, it's 50,000 China yeah. troops enough. How many do you think they need to move to LAC for a short war to humiliate India? China, I am... Why, sh- why are you... Uh, Brian, you, you keep coming and asking such funny questions. On, uh, you don't ask such funny questions on Gullet Fraud. Why are you asking such funny questions here? <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Okay. 50,000 troops is hell of a lot. You think this is, this is this chocolate going around? When we moved 50,000 troops into eastern Ladakh, everything stopped. And just think. You know, there's this old story of elephant in a room. You can't fit an elephant in a room. Why? Because the room will break. So, if the given room, which is meant for, you know, few people to fight, you can't put an elephant to fight. So, in any given terrain, if you put more number of troops, it becomes retrograde. It's not the number, he said no. It's a fight in the dog which matters. It's not the size of the dog which matters. So just by putting more troops there in the same area. Okay, I'll give you an analogy. You you want to build your strength by eating good food and all that. Would you like to eat everything in one day? You'll have indigestion because your stomach can only take that much food. You have to eat over a long period of time. You have to build your muscles. You have to do exercise and all that to become strong. By just eating more food and packing your tummy, you will have indigestion the next day. Same thing is the battlefield. Okay? So China aimed to take small passes. There are no small passes you can take. All small passes are in India. There are no pass with him. One of the problems he has in Arunachal is he's got no pass. He tried to come to Yangtze, got kicked and he went back. You see those videos which are viral, where he got hammered there and went back. Shiva Roor of India today has put it out in his tweet. Go to Shiva Roor and see what will happen if China comes back again. Yeah. And Raja Raman wants to know, General, would she go for a war to overcome internal turmoil and to shield his economic failures? No, he will not do that. He's got no reason because he, he doesn't matter him how, how his people fail. How his people... He's, there is a big disconnect. Yesterday I did this. I did this show which is called Revisionism in China, Danger, Decline and Denial. The net of this whole story, yesterday, see that. If you This question has got a long answer of yesterday. The Problem, I wouldn't say the problem, the phenomenon in this, China, uh, the, Xi Jinping is not bothered what happens to people. Earlier, the security compact, the compact between the people, the social contract, as they say, between the people and the uh, thing, uh, CCP was, you give us your freedom, we will give you, you know, what, prosperity. We will give you happiness, we will give you material comforts. But your freedom is ours. That's what the CCP guaranteed to the people. That contract is off. Today, the new contract which is emerging is, you give us your freedoms, we'll give you security. We'll give you pride, nationalism. So the high octane gas which Xi Jinping is giving to the people of China is pride. He'll not go to war for this. Next question again from Raja Raman. Uh, what is our strategical maneuver to withdraw from Kailash instead of holding on to it? We should hold on to it. Why, why should I withdraw from them? That's my land. I'll hold on to it. There's no strategic maneuver there at all. It's my land, I'll hold. I, yeah, I think he's me what your strategy. No, no, let me. I'll ask you a question back. You have a house which is in dispute. What is your strategic maneuver to evacuate that house? You have, okay, you vacate and someone else will come and sit. In law, they say 90% of your case is possession. Possession, right. Okay, so why should I leave that there? Yeah. Uh, Last question. A jobless engineer wants to know, (laughs) 
India should let this war happen with China, USA, Taiwan as it will hurt India more with USA again becoming global hegemon. We should talk with ASEAN, SEO, not UN, G20. Stop this war. Which war are you referring to, jobless? He is a jobless engineer. He can only think like this. <laughs> There's nothing. I, I don't have an answer for such. Uh, I don't know what he is talking of. No, it, it, things don't work that way, unfortunately. And uh, sir, this was this has been a thoroughly enjoyable session. Lots of I comments. hope so. No, no, no. Very, very true, sir. No, no. It is. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is a good question. Prakash Bhaskaran yeah, wants okay. to know why is India still recognizing one China policy? Who is recognizing India one China policy? I mean, let me ask you the counter question. You think India is recognizing one China policy? No. India has dropped one China policy ten years back. It is China which says on insists on one China policy. India has said no. Ten twelve years back, they said they started issuing stapled visas for people from J and K. From that day onwards, we stopped talking of one China. But yeah, अभी तो मामला बदली हो गया है. Prakash ji, Tibetans are being allowed to demonstrate outside Parliament House. Things are changing. You are living in some. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not blaming you, because obviously you've not seen a program where, you know, about on China, a serious program on China. Okay. See that. Again, I'm not again asking you to come to Ganeshwar for that because if you want to ask answers for such questions, I'm there. Because every day I do in a week I do three programs on China. Okay, that's that's my job. Okay, so you'll get in-depth answers there. We've all. I mean, it's only that we have not said it in name that one China is not there. That's a shot which is in our hand. We can play it whichever way we want. But we have stopped talking of one China long back. General Ravi Shankar, thank you so much, sir. And viewers, please like, share, and subscribe to not only our channel but also to Ganeshad. Ganeshad is growing very fast. Yeah, I would like yes. you. I would like everyone who is watching to subscribe to P Gurus and Ganeshad. And especially when we are doing this joint thing, come because we are going to choose be very choosy about our topics. Right, and we are not going to. I think we are going to, probably the next one might be on Tibet. So we'll see. Yes, then. yes, yes, yes. Thank you once again, sir. Please, uh, viewers, please do like and subscribe to both of our channels. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you.